Hey everybody, it's Alex from the Urban Ecology Center. Today I want to teach you a little bit about monarchs and how to raise them in your house. Did you know that monarch butterflies travel 3,000 miles to Mexico to winter there? In summer they come back up and lay their eggs and then when winter comes again they travel back down to Mexico. Scientists don't really even know how they do it. I don't think I could make it to Mexico without a GPS. Monarch eggs in the wild only have about a 10% chance of surviving. So when you raise monarchs properly in your home, they have a higher chance of survival, therefore increasing the monarch population, which has been in trouble over the past couple of years. The first thing we need to talk about is a monarch's life cycle, okay? A monarch starts its life as a teeny tiny egg on the back of a milkweed. After a couple of days, that the caterpillar emerges from the egg. The caterpillar eats its own egg, and then as it grows, it keeps eating the milkweed plant that it's on. It eats and eats and eats and eats, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it's ready to form a chrysalis. Usually the chrysalis hangs from the back of a milkweed plant, and it stays in its chrysalis for about a week. Once the chrysalis is done, it emerges as a butterfly. Then that butterfly can go and lay more eggs on a milkweed plant. If we're gonna talk about monarchs, we need to talk about milkweed. Milkweed is the sole plant that monarch butterflies use to lay their eggs and raise their caterpillars on. Once they're butterflies, the butterflies drink the sweet, sweet nectar out of the milkweed plant. They also drink nectar from other flowers, too. Now, milkweed, I have a whole bunch of it behind me. It grows about four to five feet tall. It has spiraling leaves, and it has this beautiful pink flower. It smells so good. I think it's called milkweed because when you break off a leaf or the stem, you see that sticky white milk sap that it produces. Pretty cool, huh? Let's go collect some eggs. I'm gonna look on the back of the milkweed leaves and store them in this container till I bring them back into our enclosure. Let's go look. Now that we have our eggs, we're ready to prepare our enclosure. You're gonna need a few items. I like to start my eggs using these flower tubes. You can put water in them and put the cap, and then your leaves can go directly in them. And a cup to put your flower tubes in. You're also gonna need a spray bottle with about 10% bleach mixture. So you put about uh, a tablespoon or less of bleach into your spray bottle, fill it with water, and you're gonna clean out your cage with this. This is gonna prevent your caterpillars from staying healthy. You're also gonna need some sort of enclosure. This one uh, is homemade. Some of them you can buy online, or some of them you can get kind of creative and think of materials that you can use at home. As, as long as there's air movement through it, and it's not completely sealed off, it, it, and it needs to be able to see sunlight. Okay, let's get started. Now I have my container of leaves that have eggs on the bottom of them. I always like to start caterpillars as eggs, as opposed to finding caterpillars on a milkweed and bringing them into my enclosure. Remember when I said that most caterpillars only have about a 10% chance of survival? Well, that's because a lot of times they get mites or parasites that can actually kill them. By getting just the egg, you have a less chance of them getting mites or parasites so they can stay healthy. To put them in your flower tubes, you are going to peel back the leaf along the stem, keeping the stem intact. This makes sure that there's gonna be enough um, 
access to water and you can just stick it down and then stick it in your container. I'm gonna do that with all of the leaves that I found today with, that have eggs on them. Fill it with water. There, we're all set. All of my leaves in the cup have eggs. They all have water in them. And I know that they'll be ready to hatch in about five to seven days, so I'll keep an eye on them. Before I put them in my enclosure, I have to make sure that it's clean. I'm going to spray the bottom of my enclosure, the screen wall, and wet my rig. Making sure I just get all the germs out before I introduce new caterpillars. how big they are when they hatch. This caterpillar is snacking on some milkweed. I also have a chrysalis dangling from a leaf. And then on top, I have a really tiny caterpillar that probably hatched this week. When you raise a lot of caterpillars, it can be a lot of work to switch off the leaves individually. So I like to, if you have access to, I like just to cut off the milkweed plant enough so that I can put it into a vase or a jar, just so that it can get enough water. So that it gets enough water, I put slashes in the stem with the scissors, just so that more water can enter the, enter the plant. A plant like this will last probably five or six days. And then you don't need to continuously change out the leaves. The leaves that your eggs are on will be good for about a week and a half. They don't. They don't need to be introduced to a big plant for a week or so. We'll put these back in their home too. Because caterpillars eat a lot, and I mean a lot, they also poop a lot. Their poop is called phrase, and it's just digested milkweed, so it's not stinky really, but it needs to be clean from their enclosure once a day. When you clean it out, you can just sweep it out of the bottom of your enclosure and then make sure you follow up with spraying from your bleach water. From start to finish, a monarch's life cycle is about 28 to 32 days. So once it has emerged from its chrysalis as a beautiful butterfly, it's going to need to hang upside down for at least four to five hours so that it can stretch out its wings and dry them out. Once you see it flying and fluttering around your enclosure, you know it's ready to be let out. Now, monarchs are really special. Their wings are very powerful, but they can be fragile. So when you are ready to release your butterfly, all you need to do is open up the door. They should fly out. Sometimes you can guide them. If you're releasing monarchs with kids, it's fun for them to do it themselves. If you want to hold the monarch, you pinch both of their wings together using your pointer finger and your middle finger, keeping your fingers as close to the abdomen as possible. I like to put my thumb underneath the butterfly so that its feet can rest on my thumb. You can take it outside and uh, hold it like this for as long as you want. Stick it on your child's finger. Their feet are sticky. They actually taste from their feet. And then they'll fly away. But often, make sure you release them in a place where there's lots of flowers. They are going to be hungry and they need to have access to flowers. Just like that. It's easy as that. Happy raising monarchs, friends. Bye.